Here we have this eight digit frequency counter and this plastic case that supposedly encloses the counter. I got both of these from AliExpress. This is available on eBay. I haven't seen this on eBay, but it's, it's probably there. The top and bottom and sides and ends, I guess. And some fittings. So the first thing you need to do is strip off all of the paper. I generally do it by starting. We want to scratch it as little as possible. Once we can get a hold of the paper, then if you are careful, it'll peel off in one piece. You have to maybe work your way around holes. See here, it's going to try to tear. If you can take it off without tearing it, it's easier. He wants to tear at the holes, so sort of work your way around them. And there we go. So with all the paper, well almost all the paper, you'll see in a minute, uh, the two side plates are identical. The top and bottom plates are identical except the top plate has these two holes in it right here. Square holes. Rectangular holes. The two end plates are identical. In a little bag of components, which just consists of some screws, I'm guessing eight screws, there are these two little things right here. And they have paper on them. So it needs peeled off as well. Now I'll take the uh, frequency counter out of its bag. Now the frequency counter has some protective tape over the uh, digits, so we'll have to take that off. Now the front is probably pretty easy to install. These two little, see the front has two push buttons on it. And these little black pieces extend those push buttons through the front panel. Put the little extensions here and put the front panel here like this. So there we go, the front's no problem. So there we have one front panel complete. Now, the back of this has these two connectors. There's a plus and a minus, and a uh, signal and a ground. Get in a little closer. You can see on this connector a plus and a minus. On this one a ground and a signal. Well, normally we think of plus 
being read. And we plug this in. We'll see that the red is indeed hooked to the plus. But if I remember correctly, and it's been like 10 years, this one's backwards to the convention. See, when I plug it in, oh, they've changed it. <laughs> this used to be reversed. I have to give them credit for that. There we go. Now, we'll put the end in place. It looks as if this end is cut out, but I don't think the wires will come out to cut out. They might. I think we're better off passing the wires through these oval holes. Now it looks like the ends don't fasten to the top or bottom front or back panel. They just sit in here. I think I'll put a side plate on. And then I'll put an end plate on. So there we have it all sandwiched together. I'll put the other four screws in before something falls out. Now that it's all together, you see the wires are exiting the back. But these oval holes are cut such that if you don't want the holes to exit the side, it actually allows for that. So there we have it all wrapped up in a nice enclosure. Now there are two, well I guess there's three. Let's see if I can get in on here a little bit. See right below there, that's a, an adjustable device. That's an adjustable device. That is and that is. I'm going to try to find out what these are. And then I'm going to mark their location and drill very small holes in this in this black panel so I, I can access them. Or at least one of them. This I believe to be the crystal or the oscillator. I don't know if it's an oscillator or a crystal. I'm thinking that with uh, the proximity of this device to this oscillator it may allow me to uh, correct the frequency. I'm not sure what these do. I've got my two frequency counters. The old one is probably 10 years or more old and the new one hooked up to my uh, GPS stabilized oscillator. This is a number of satellites it's monitoring. I've never bothered to try to adjust this. It's always been 25 to 29 hertz high at 10 megahertz. This one says it came from China. Uh, it's varying between 9 and 10 hertz. I did drill the hole in the back of the case. 
I'm going to see if I can get on that little tensiometer. Seems to be very sensitive. So there we go. Now it's going to vary uh, by the last digit, that's inevitable. I've had everything running the GPS oscillator, both uh, counters, for 24 hours. So I believe I'll just leave it run. Now I'm going to do another video where I try to replace the connectors at each end. Maybe with an SMA connector down here. I think there's enough room. And I haven't really decided what I'm going to do with this power connector. On this one, I have a BNC connector at one end and a flying. Well, this leads to a wall wart. I may try to adjust this one as well. I did make adjustments on this one. These ends are not glued on, they're just pushed on. I think there may be a little bit of rubber cement in them. See this one's idling between 0 and 1. By the way, these are both set for brightness level 3. There is a configuration menu. This push button's defective, but this one works. It allows you to offset the frequency. If I don't change it, I just push it again. I get the IF. channel A, I don't know what that means. Apparently there's some sort of an attenuator built in it. And the brightness. Now I can change the brightness. It goes up to 8 and then runs over. So that's brightness 1, 2, 3 which is fine for me. Then I'll go back into the... Uh, the brightness is the last menu selection. In the subdirectory below, there's a bunch of information about these things, including two translated manuals, and one of them by, I think, an American amateur radio operator contains a breakdown of the programming and some comments about the uh, temperature controlled crystal oscillator uh, that serves as a master oscillator for this. I've included a couple of YouTube links as well. They're all listed below.